All right, everybody. So on today's video, I went Uber driving in Jacksonville Beach, Florida over the Memorial Day weekend. I was there for two days. This was the second day on Jacksonville Beach. That's Memorial Day weekend, and I had done Thursday and did really well, but it was like Friday or Saturday. I can't remember. I was there for like two or three days, and there was nobody out. And I was like, why isn't there anybody out? I mean, Thursday was lit. You'd think Friday would have been better. Well, it turns out that there had been shootings, so of course, everybody was hiding. I just found it really odd that for some reason or another, Friday was dead. There was nobody out there. Like, on Thursday, it was lit. Now it's the weekend. There's nobody out. What happened? Possibly people got scared because of another freaking shooting, which is sadly becoming commonplace in this area of Jacksonville Beach because of its proximity to Jacksonville, some say... But no, there are some inherent problems with Jacksonville Beach itself that make it dangerous. Interestingly enough, my first passenger of the night wasn't at a nightclub like usual. It was at a hospital. Now, this person was kind of intoxicated and very upset. And I couldn't really gather too much information from her about what happened. But basically, somehow one of her friends got hurt. And then the paramedics refused to let them go on the ambulance. And she was kind of disgruntled. So it was kind of difficult for me to understand exactly what her story was. Because she was kind of drunk, kind of angry, kind of disgruntled, very upset. And obviously, her friend got hurt this evening. Not sure exactly if it was related to the incidents we've talked about. But whatever. At the end of the day... This is the reality of Jacksonville Beach. Friday night, Saturday night, completely dead because of shootings. And it was crazy because, like I said, it was totally packed on Thursday. I, I made great money on Thursday. In fact, on Thursday was my 50% tip rate would have been the highest tip rate I've ever got. So it seems like when things are good, people tip in Jacksonville Beach, which... It's a lot better than where I live now in Sarasota, to be honest. So I had to kind of convince this passenger to get out of the car, which is kind of weird because she was a single female late at night. And usually single females late at night are eager to get the crap out of their car because they don't want to be in a car with a stranger. But she wanted to stay in the car and talk. I gave her several clues that it was time to go until I finally say, Haley, look, I got to go work. I, I got to go. But anyways, that was the first passenger of the night. And I just found it disturbingly odd that, you know, here on Thursday, I landed here. I made great money. Everything was popping. So I'm thinking, crap, if Thursday's like this, Friday and Saturday, I'm going to kill it in Jacksonville Beach. I even stayed right in Jacksonville Beach, even though the hotel was more expensive, thinking I'll have no problem making this money back on Uber. Well, it turns out that was a mistake because it was completely dead. According to one of my subscribers, the reason it's dead is because somebody got shot, apparently right in front of him. And then, of course, um, they shut down the clubs after the shooting because, you know, Jacksonville, if one thing happens, then two and three things happen in retaliation or whatever. So they had to shut down the whole thing. And that's kind of the reality. Now, in Jeannie Springs, Florida, a man from Jacksonville was shot at the Springs in Gilchrist County. Now, the, the you know, Florida, the sheriffs are always trying to get on the front page and, you know, talk about everything that happens. Well, because it's Memorial Day weekend. And there were shootings in Jacksonville, there were shootings in uh, Gainesville, and I'm sure other places had shootings as well. But it seems, based off of social media, that despite the fact there were shootings all over the state of Florida, none of the sheriff's offices made any press conferences about any of it. In other words, they avoided the media. They didn't want media coverage on the fact that Memorial Day weekend in Florida was a complete violent crapshoot for the most part. Now, we've talked about how Florida's new open carry laws and you know, permitless concealed carry, a bunch of crap they changed with the gun laws in Florida has made the state a much more dangerous place. And we're starting to see the results of these new laws, which is, of course, if everybody's armed and nobody has taken a safety course to get their, you know, gun on them, but everybody's armed now and people are out drinking and they're high and drunk more than ever, of course you're going to have an explosion of violence in Florida. And unfortunately, what's happening in the state of Florida is an explosion of violence because of the new gun laws that the governor put in place. Now, of course, they're starting to back off the media coverage on a lot of these shootings because they know it doesn't look good on them. It doesn't really take a genius to figure out that a state that's in the middle of an overdose crisis, a state that has some of the highest DUI and just reckless behavior, the last thing you want to do is also, hey, let's add permitless carry into this factor and see what a bunch of drunk hype idiots in the state of Florida are going to do if they don't even need a safety course to carry. By the way, you, before the state of Florida had perfect laws. If you really wanted to carry, you could. You could just go and get a permit. Well, 
Talking to the people that live here in Jacksonville Beach on this night, I got a few passengers that were not tourists that live here. Obviously, the tourists were gone after whatever happened. But um, they were telling me that living in Jacksonville Beach, seeing violence becomes normal. In other words, it's a great place to live, but the level of violence. Now, I talked to people that were not tourists that were living here in Jacksonville Beach, and they're telling me that the levels of violence that they're seeing are disturbing. They tell me that they see violence here on a regular basis. Now, Jacksonville Beach is a little different than where I live in Sarasota. For one, it's a much larger city. The roads that lead in and off the island and through the island, or it's not even an island, it's just kind of like a beach area. There's a river that separates Jacksonville from uh, Jacksonville Beach. So it kind of feels like an island, but it's really not. But you just have to go over a bridge just like you would in any other island town. So Jacksonville Beach is feels like an island because of the backwater but it's really not an island and jacksonville beach is a much larger metropolitan area thus because it's a much larger place you have something called three lane highways that go north to south and east to west and that makes navigating this area particularly at night incredibly easy for uber driving there's still a lot of residential neighborhoods that are kind of compact and difficult to get in and out of but for the most part Navigating Jacksonville Beach is a breeze because it's a larger city with better road systems. Thus, it was actually very enjoyable and very profitable, with the exception of a few residential nooks where there's just no major roads and just small older grid patterns. The blocks are way too close to each other, so there's a lot of stop signs. You'll find stretches where it's like stop signs, stop signs. You might go through seven stop signs in a one-mile area if you're in the residential grid patterns. But once you're on the main roads, it's very easy to navigate. Now my passenger was on the ground and uh, there was two females and one male. The male was just belligerent. Now the girl that sat up front, I guess it was her Uber account and she was very ticked off because the two people that she were with were literally acting a complete fool. In particular, the guy. Now usually when a guy goes out to drink with a girl, with two girls, that guy's probably going to not be the one getting drunk off his mind. Well, he was the one that got ridiculously drunk, acting completely immature. The girls were kind of irritated and ticked off at him. They took him home, but you can tell they were probably never going to go out with this kid ever again because he acted a complete fool. When I stopped at the stop sign, he threw himself, jokingly, into the front of the, of the, of the car, acting like if he had flown through the dash. Uh, you know, like he was just really, I've never really considered beating up somebody in my life. Like, like, but this guy, like literally his behavior was so pathetic and embarrassing that I literally like thought that this kid and me were literally going to have to fight because his behavior was just so obnoxious. He was in my car acting a fool and I deal with a lot of drunk people on Uber, but this guy was just way, way too lightweight couldn't handle it and he made his female passengers feel uncomfortable you could tell that they were visibly ticked off at him so this ride was a little uncomfortable because of their behavior now when i pulled up he was actually laying on the ground he wasn't even standing up so if you're an uber driver and your passenger is so drunk that they're not even standing up anymore let me give you a clue that one may be one you might want to pass on let somebody else deal with that nightmare and we were out here the previous night. It was a Thursday and it was packed. You might have seen the video of people walking around in crowds. Here it is. It's earlier in the night and it's a Friday and it's empty. So that might suggest that something actually did go on earlier in the evening. And I, I was there. I just I must have been sleeping and I missed it because I'll sleep from like 9 till 10 or 11, you know, preparing to be up all night to Uber drive. So I figured, you know, I must have been sleeping when this whole thing happened. But I must have also been a block or two away from it. Now, we did hear like a loud bang when we were sleeping, but I never figured it could have been that. So it is possible that we were right there when this happened. Um, my subscriber who commented in the original video, if you want to comment exactly where the shooting took place and about what time you think it happened, because I, I heard a bang, like we heard like a boom and it felt like something hit our window while we were in the hotel, but we didn't really pay any mind to it. I thought maybe it was a car with an exhaust system or something. But thinking back now, we did hear a large boom. It was just one single large boom right outside our hotel room, which would have been right in the strip. And we were on the first floor, so we would have heard it very easily. But anyways, the whole night, like, we heard the boom. We heard some commotion. But I thought it was just an idiot, like, maybe with a car or something. I didn't really think it would have been that. 
But now thinking back on it, that boom we heard might have actually been that. Crazy. It cleared out the whole night. Everybody left. And it was a really crappy night to Uber. And uh, this is kind of what Jacksonville Beach is laid out like. It's kind of like grid pattern. So once you get into the back streets, it's like stop sign, stop sign, stop sign. Well, these people were completely a mess. And I was really glad to get them out of the car. Particularly the guy, when he left, he also slammed the door. Like, I literally almost considered giving this guy a good, you know, a good whoop. And he was definitely disrespectful. And I didn't give them a bad rating because the girl that was holding the, the account was behaving. But this kid was actually completely obnoxious. His behavior was not appropriate. By about 2 a.m., it had got so bad that I literally just parked the truck and waited for the Uber app, which is kind of weird because, again, the previous night, I was like, okay, if Thursday was lit, why am I sitting here on a Friday night not having any passengers? Like, I really wasn't aware what had happened earlier in the evening, so I'm thinking it was going to be a great night to Uber, and it was actually pretty crappy. And most of the people that I got weren't even tourists, they were locals, so that would have all been a clue that something had happened, but... It didn't really cross my mind until the next day I see this thing on my channel where the guy's like, oh, you're in Jacksonville Beach. Oh, you know, there was a shooting there last night. I'm like, oh, I was there. I missed it. Only thing I can assume is that it must have been in absolute close proximity to my hotel because when I was in the hotel, I heard a large boom and it woke us up and I thought it was maybe somebody with a car exhaust. You know, they have those car exhausts that backfire. That's what we thought because it didn't even cross my mind that that could have been happening outside my hotel room in Jacksonville Beach, but apparently that's what the crap happened. All right, so we got to chat with some of the locals, and I'll tell you the difference between the locals in Jacksonville Beach and the locals here in Sarasota. Sarasota, where I live, you have what I call yuppies. We also have Bradenton, which is what I would call ghetto people. Yuppies don't like to talk too much. Yuppies are actually not very sociable. For the most part, we're dealing with weak conversation here in Sarasota, unless you get somebody older and then they will talk. Now, in Jacksonville, you have rednecks. Rednecks love to talk. And the conversation and dealing with people in Jacksonville have been some of the most in-depth conversations I've had anywhere with anybody. They're young people like me. They're experiencing the same things as me. And I feel like the connection that I felt with the passengers that are full-time residents of Jacksonville and Jacksonville Beach have been really good interactions. These are kind of like redneck type dudes and they talk, even the females are willing to talk and they talk about, you know, real life conversations, like things that are actually happening relevant to our lives. And I find that many of the topics that are interesting to me are interesting to them. In other words, there's a demographic of people here, mostly like what I would call rednecks, they like to talk, they get into conversation, they're just really good passengers, they're very good tippers as well. I mean, the tips that I got in Jacksonville Beach were so much better than anything I got over here in Sarasota. So it seems like Uber driving in Jacksonville pays a whole lot better than Sarasota, and the passengers are a lot more talkative. Now, you can definitely tell there's an element of danger with Jacksonville that you don't have in Sarasota. I drove into uh, Jacksonville from Jacksonville Beach and somewhere in the area of Arlington. I saw cars that were hit and runs and people left, police, you know, just a lot of bad activity. And it seems like maybe I'm wrong, but is Arlington getting to be worse than Moncrief? If you live in the Jacksonville area, I would love to hear your opinion on that. Do you think that Arlington is getting as bad as Moncrief? Because I drove through Moncrief and it was dead at night, but in Arlington, bro, there's a lot more action. Now, Moncrief might be more violent overall, but it seems like Jacksonville Beach, in particular heading towards Arlington, bro, there was a lot of action. I'm talking hit and runs. Uh, some of the passengers that I picked up, you could clearly tell. The other thing is like there's a different level of violence here, and you can feel with some of the passengers that I had. Um, some of the rednecks were pretty cool. But some of them, there's a level of violence here that you can actually feel, you know, people are armed, they're drunk, they're aggressive. So uh, some of the passengers that I picked up definitely made me feel concerned or just more cautious. But there's definitely a, um, there's definitely a level of, uh, of violence that you can literally feel in the air in this area where there's more activity. Now, you're not really seeing too much of it driving through here, but like 
with the naked eye, you'll see more stuff than you do on the GoPro. You can just see people hanging out in the background. Sometimes you hit the back streets at 3 in the morning, and there's drunk people biking around. So there's, like, more of an element for things to go wrong. And in that sense, Jacksonville Beach is definitely much more dangerous than Sarasota. And the people that I pick up that are drinking in Sarasota are staying in hotels. But here in Jacksonville Beach... They have a lot of vacation rentals. So when you combine residential areas with vacation rentals with drunk tourists, man, that makes for a horrible crap hole. And I think what makes Sarasota nice is that there's, I think, a little bit less vacation rentals. There are some vacation rentals in this area, but the amount of vacation rentals in Jacksonville Beach compared to here, there's a little bit more uh, private property here that's not really being used for vacation rentals. I think the vacation rental market is what's really turned Jacksonville Beach into a crap hole. Jacksonville Beach would have been a lot of homeowners back in the day. Now you got these vacation rentals. Vacation rentals means that instead of like two people getting a room or a hotel, like we would at a hotel, you got seven or eight kids staying in one house drunk together and they're splitting the costs. It just lends itself to bad things happening. And I think Jacksonville Beach is a perfect example of the harm that vacation rentals are doing to the state of Florida. Interestingly, many of the real estate boards here in the state of Florida are telling realtors that they need to defend the rights of vacation rentals because a lot of investors are buying these because they say that it protects the state of Florida. But most realtors and most people know that vacation rentals are hurting the state of Florida. They're just attracting the wrong type of vacationer, the wrong type of person we don't want a house in a residential neighborhood to be turned into a miniature hotel of seven or eight people staying together because they can't afford to pay it for themselves. So now you got all these kids in one house. It lends itself to trouble. In hotels, you have amenities, you have security. Now you got all these kids driving bicycles late at night. They're not sober. Um, there's no security. There's nothing. Sometimes they can't even find the right house because they're so drunk. There's a lot of elements to this whole vacation rental that has destroyed Jacksonville Beach. And it's pathetic to see the real estate boards of Florida telling people, hey, we need to protect vacation rentals when vacation rentals are destroying the state of Florida. Now, realtors in the state of Florida are being told that they need to stand up and protect the rights of vacation rentals because there's so many investors buying these things. But it really isn't what we want in the state of Florida. The state of Florida, when you see a place like Jacksonville Beach where it's no longer single family homes or, you know, people snowboarding in these houses, it's young kids doing vacation rentals. You see the amount of crime and violence it brings to the area and it's just general mischief in general. You know that it's not a good thing for the area. Overall, I would say that the people that I met in Jacksonville Beach were really nice, talkative people and we had some great, insightful conversations. They were generous tippers more than anything I experienced anywhere else. And I guess I learned something about vacation rentals and how they contribute to the deterioration of neighborhoods. It really deteriorates neighborhoods when you have this many vacation rentals. It does nothing good. All it does is create situations where people are vagrant in residential communities. It's trashy. It leads to trouble. Jacksonville Beach, definitely a lot of crime to deal with here. When I asked the locals their thoughts about living in the Jacksonville area, overwhelmingly their thoughts were, I love living here, I've lived here for many years, but the violence is out of control. You deal with a lot of crime. That was the first thing that every single person told me. If you were to ask people in Sarasota what their main concerns were to live here, I'm sure crime would not be at the top of the list. Now, Jacksonville Beach is a great place to go to vacation, and me and Katie go there almost every year. It's one of our favorite places to go to just to relax and unwind. There's great little coastal communities like Fernandina Beach, St. Augustine Beach, St. Mary's, Georgia. These are great places to slow down and unwind, but when you are in the Jacksonville metropolitan area, crime is always a concern, and unfortunately, Jacksonville Beach has become a hub for violence and crime, and the vacation rentals, from what I can gather, are one of the major reasons that this area is struggling with kind of debauchery and just lack of discipline, lack of control. You know, you hit these back streets at three in the morning and there's people out biking around drunk. That always lends for trouble. Checking out, that's what it was like to drive in Uber driving or rideshare driving in the Jacksonville area, particularly this area here of Jacksonville Beach. I had a great time, met great people. 
and I figured out that people in Jacksonville are great conversation havers and great tippers. I would love to do more Uber driving in this city. I actually had a great time, but I think it's a little too dangerous for the most part as well. I was definitely surprised to find out that Uber driving here pays considerably more and that the way the roads and highways are laid out here are very convenient for Uber driving. In the Sarasota area, we do have a grid pattern far inland, but it's not a well-lit, nicely organized grid pattern. You actually have to pay really close attention. Sarasota is supposed to be, according to some people, one of the number one places in the United States for pedestrian versus car. That could be fixed if there was more street lighting like they have here in Jacksonville. It seems like in Jacksonville, the, wor the roads are better lit, better maintained, and of course, more expansion projects, which means that driving at night in Jacksonville feels a lot safer than driving at night in Sarasota because in Sarasota, the roads are too dark, they're not well lit, and it almost feels like you could hit a pedestrian at any given time. Better lit roads, better maintained roads, a better grid pattern makes Uber driving in this particular area very efficient, which leads to better fuel economy. And of course, the driver's more relaxed. You're not so complicated like in Sarasota, where you kind of have to find your way through these roads that don't make any sense. You stop at a red light and wait a long time. Seems like Jacksonville has a much better uh, road pattern. It makes driving here more efficient. That's it. Hope you guys liked today's video. Make sure you leave me your thoughts and opinions about Jacksonville Beach. Have you ever been there? Do you like the area? Or if you live there, is crime really your number one concern out there? What type of crazy crap have you seen in Jacksonville Beach?